Welcome back to BWO Daily, your source for news in sports entertainment and the world of professional wrestling from your boys at Busted Wide Open. My name is Nick Howell. And I am Sir Ian Dangerous. And Nick, what would you think about Rusev in AEW? Mm. What if I said that to you? What would your reaction be? My reaction would be, it's a little, it's a little busy over there right now. Yes, uh, and that's definitely true. That's very true. What about Matt Cardona, uh, Zack Ryder? What would you think about Zack Ryder in uh, AEW? Given the right gimmick, he could do well. Mm. Well, according to Cody, who was just on ESPN, they're both free agents who should be on anyone's radar. They've both drawn money. They've got TV experience. They've got locker room experience. And for both of them, the pros greatly outweigh the cons. Agreed. And I'm not sure if the Cody outweighs the Tony Khan, but if he does, he'd certainly like to pick them up because he says that they're their greatest free agents and he's happy for them being out there and uh, they can go anywhere. They're valuables, commodities, wherever they go. But if he said, he said, if I had my druthers, I would sign them. The first so, thing that comes to mind to me is I'm thinking of, we had Bulgarian Brute Rusev with the Ravishing <laughs> Russian Lana. That was great. We also had, after he was granted the key to the city of his hometown, we had Rusev Day. On Rusev Day. That on Rusev Day. And we, yeah. yeah, and, and of, all, on all day, of all days, Rusev Day. Yeah. And then he picked up Aiden English as a sort of valet slash mm -hmm. sidekick, right? But I'm, have we really seen Rusev on his own? I don't, that's, I don't yeah. think so. And I'm, I'm wondering if, if Lana's not coming, if Aiden English isn't coming, who is also a free agent, by the way. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. But if what is Rusev like on his own? That's we haven't seen yet. Yeah, but we have seen a guy who's able to get into a ring, work a match, and, you know, depending on what character he does. I mean, now he's Miro, right? He's Miro and he's on Twitch and he streams a lot. Um, what that means for him as a character coming into somewhere new... Uh, we don't know. We don't know if he would uh, stick like to Miro Day or something like that, or if he'd try right. something completely new. We kind of know what Matt Cardona is going to do, because it's basically just that's who he is. Woo woo uh, woo. Maybe not like woo 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 <laughs> specifically, but it's he's going to be pretty much what we saw. Right. Um, but that being said, Cody said that those two guys, if he had, you know, if he would pick them, he would take them in if he had the choice. But to your point, Nick, you did say. There's a lot of people in AEW right now, and Cody admitted if he signed them, it would take away spots from other people. But he did address that. He said in his capitalistic cold nature that he has, he actually doesn't mind that because it makes everybody else step their game up. But he would want to do it fairly and responsibly. Uh, the best wrestlers, no matter where they come from, you're going to want on your show. So that was his way of looking at it is these guys are really good. I'd want them on the show. Is there room for them to fit? Eh, if I could do it responsibly and fairly, I'd do it. So... Cody out there saying, like, it, it, doors wide open for well, those Well, they guys. also bring a built-in audience. That's the other exactly. thing that uh, the other ones that he might be referring to possibly do not. And those are eyes on the product. Those are buyers of merch. Yeah. There are business, legit business reasons why I could see Cody being very interested in both Zach and Miro. And so, we're also we're looking at a situation where both of these guys – Right, right now you're in a world where like you look at Impact and Impact Slammiversary and how many eyes they got on that product because of all the sympathy that's out there for people that were cut by WWE, perhaps without visualizing their full potential. Um, and so these are two guys where that's the case. It's not someone who's disgruntled who's leaving WWE and you just want to hear them bag on WWE and then, you know, what's AEW going to do with them? This is, there's, there's sympathy here. So they could actually do a lot with them. Cody also mentioned a few other names, which would be interesting in the context of AEW, who also okay. brought up. Ray Mysterio, who, as we know, still hasn't re-signed a contract with WWE, and he could be left with an eyeball hanging out of his head and in some sort of storyline limbo in WWE until he does re-sign. But Cody did say that uh, Ray is the greatest luchador ever. He still has a ton left to give to the wrestling business, and he's also not a one-company individual. No. Um, he's so proven that over the decades. Yes. So he's Cody said there's... Something that someone else is currently discussing with him at this point, you never know. I wouldn't be surprised if that's Cody's subtle way of saying, oh, Tony's reached out to him. Tony's reached out to Ray and said, uh, hey, Ray, um, we, can, we can offer you this money and freedom as well. 
So if Ray is, uh, it depends. It just depends on how much Ray is being offered by WWE. Um, from what we heard, they he wanted more. They said no. But there's other aspects of the negotiation that are going on right now, including his son. And so we'll see what WWE is able to offer Ray yeah. Mysterio. But it does sound like AEW would be very interested, as you would expect. Sure. With the greatest luchador of all time, Kurt Angle also got brought up. Cody said he's a very special wrestler. Um, he's had three matches with him on the indies when Kurt was on the indies before Cody started with AEW. Uh, he said that he's not sure if Kurt Angle wants to keep doing it beyond being a wrestler. If he's got, he's, he's multifaceted. He has a ton of other things he's interested in, has his fingers in. So he's not sure if, if Kurt would be interested in doing other things besides just being in the ring wrestling. I think that yeah. means backstage, like AEW obviously putting a lot of managers with people. Imagine Kurt being a manager for somebody. Another Arn, like, another Tully, another Vicky. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. You know, I, or just even backstage creative, you know, someone sure. who just happens to be there giving opinions and helping out the young the young crew, which they have a lot of, you know, and Kurt's definitely got a lot of stuff to pass on. So it'd be interesting if they could actually get Kurt, if, if Kurt would be interested. I think that's what Cody was saying is he's not sure if Kurt's interested. I could see him be a you know, one-off. I don't know that he'd do a long contractual run in, in AEW. There's been people that have come in for a one-off, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're like, man, I like it here. Let's <laughs> yeah. stick around. That's true. So you never know. It, it, it's obviously, it comes down to uh, how Kurt feels if he ever does show up over there. Lord knows he's still got He's you know, Now he's back in WWE's good graces, so maybe he doesn't have any real reason to. Who knows? It's not like a Vicky Guerrero situation where you know she talks to AEW once and WWE stops returning her calls. So the, the last name that was brought up to Cody, and this is one that I thought was very interesting, Tessa Blanchard, who, as we know, recently dropped the, the Impact heavyweight belt uh, with some controversy and is currently down in Mexico with fiancé Daga. Cody said she's got a lot of talent. He does not know what the current deal is with her and Impact. Uh, he, he doesn't have any like clear idea of what's going on there. Sure. Uh, and at the end of the day, the women's division isn't really up to him. Right now, uh, That's Kenny's Kenny, thing. Kenny Omega, Brandy Rhodes, and Tony Khan are actually in charge of the women's division. Okay. So, but he said that he would not be surprised if they have discussed it uh, or have some sort of plan in place there or have some idea of what they want to do. So he does. He did say he has a, he has a fondness for her because if you remember, she was at All In. She was in that fatal four-way match uh, with Britt Baker, excuse me, Dr. Britt Baker, Chelsea Green, and Madison Rain. In fact, uh, Tessa actually pinned Chelsea Green to win that match. So Cody's got a bit of a soft spot for her because she was there for that. And that means she does have a history with AEW. I think when we were originally hearing of AEW coming up and we had the debut of Sean Spears and Tully Blanchard uh, being a part of it, we were like, hmm, is yeah. Tessa not too far behind? I think we've been speculating that for the better part of this year, though when they when they gave her the belt – in the in the Sammy Callahan yeah, feud, yeah, that was kind of washed away, and here we are again, back at one. Yeah, and Tully's I'm over there. Here going, hmm. Dad's over there. Yep. <laughs> and Cody mentioned that. Cody said Tully, her father's in AEW. Uh, he said he's got a, a a soft spot for second and third generation wrestlers. He wants to see them do well, have the best experience. So. Yeah, they're not ruling it out at all. If anything, they're, he, Cody was given a lot of reasons why. She could end up there yeah. Um, and staying very politic and not bringing up any potential backstage issues she might have, uh, just saying that the door could be open for Tessa to come over to, uh, to, uh, to AEW. And I got to say, Nick, um, you know, all of the drama, the Tessa drama aside, it's inarguable that she brings a star presence to any ring she's in. And that's a division that's desperately in need of some big stars. Yeah, definitely. And uh, the level of mentorship that she would have in AEW is the thing that comes to mind for me immediately. People that could coach her, that could... I mean, you know, dad's right there. Dad's there. If so. she and Eva Lee wanted to get into a fist fight backstage, you know, you got dad right there. I mean, I'd pay to hope. see that as a main event of a paper. Well, but... let's keep it in the ring is what sure. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't say anything sideways to Big Swole. Just keep it in the ring right. and we'll be all, we'll all be good. But I think I think that AEW could use a Tessa Blanchard, yeah. pr provided there's no drama. Yeah. So I, it makes sense that they would be looking at her and going, <laughs> "What's uh, what's going on with Impact? Nothing anymore." Hey. 
Hey, hey. They def- I've been saying for the longest time, they need their Charlotte Flair. They need their Becky Lynch. They need yep. their female superstar tent powerhouse pole. draw. Yep. Yeah. Tent pole. The great yep. word. Thank the you. Tent pole female talent. And she could absolutely be that. So, yep. so Cody, with some interesting words about some, uh, some people that are out there looking for a place to land, uh, gives you some interesting speculation about who might be coming up in AEW, who might be mm. showing up over there. He also said on Twitter separately that that TNT belt he's holding – Will be finished August twelfth. Uh, it's going to get a nice little silver. You mean the real nickel one, not it. the toy belt he's been carrying around. Well, it's an unfinished belt right now. They're sure. going to get some some silver and nickel on it. There's going to be some textures. It's going to be very elegant, he says. So I'm looking forward. Uh, I'm with you. I'm looking forward to getting that finished one. Um, so there's some prestige on that thing. Yeah. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, that's it, Nick. Happy birthday! I got to say really quickly to Scott Steiner. There's 141 and two thirds chance that he's turning 58 today, and uh, had he made it, had he made it, Captain Aww. Lou Albano would have been 87 today. He passed in 2009. Um, I still remember that. Actually, the, the first time I saw Captain Lou Albano, I, I actually have to admit this was in the music video for Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Yep. Yeah, yep. first time I first time I saw him. You and me both. Yeah. But uh, but then, you know, caught up on everything else later. Right. <laughs> it's amazing happy... how much more wrestling I've gone back and watched from the late 70s through the through like the late 80s. Right. Now that I'm older, <laughs> I watch more now than I did then. Well, because we actually can now yeah. for only nine ninety nine. Yeah. But, uh, but yes, happy, happy, uh, happy birthday to Captain Lou Albano. Happy birthday to Scott Steiner, the genetic freak. And that is the news. Well, thank you, sir. You're dangerous. Happy birthday to Scott Steiner. Give you an old little kiss on the bicep oh, there as a goodness. little tribute and uh, rest in peace. Disaster. Captain yeah. Lou Albano. I, I invoke Steiner math quite a bit, as Three and Dangerous <laughs> will everybody attest. everybody does. Everybody <laughs> does. God. Trying to figure out how old he is, we could probably do some eight and two-thirds plus 33% chance that Yeah, he is. but that's only if Kurt Angle's there. That's true. That, that makes, that makes you, your, your, your chances drastic go down if Kurt Angle's there. That's true. That is very true. Thank you for the news update, Sir Ian uh-huh. Dangerous. I'm excited about those uh, uh, opportunities that Cody mentioned. But, uh, guys, heads up. We are moving to Twitch for BWO Live starting this Saturday, uh, August 1st. So head over to twitch.tv slash Open. Make sure you're following us over there. We're moving our live shows from YouTube over to Twitch. Discord community, get into that, and all of our other social media is down in the links below. But my name is Nick Howell. You can find me on Twitter at Data Center Dude. And I am Sir Ian Dangerous. You can find me on Twitter at Sir Ian Dangerous. And we will see you guys next time.